So after doing a lot of research on foundational activities you can do to optimize the success that you achieve in life, I was confused because there are certain billionaires and millionaires who didn't seem to follow these things. These were foundational things like exercising daily, getting your aerobic exercise in, things like cardio or swimming or jogging or bicycling, things like getting your uh, sleep in, having a reasonable amount of sleep on a daily basis and rest, as well as things like meditation, eating well. All these things were interesting because they seem to conflict with other uh, first world country or modern America values like work hard, work 90 plus hours a week. And it also conflicted with the fact that certain billionaires, not all of them, but certain billionaires uh, like Warren Buffett or Elon Musk, they would only drink soda and they would only eat junk food like McDonald's. In fact, Warren Buffett, he still eats McDonald's almost every day. Uh, he actually was filmed in a recent interview during his annual meeting sneaking in a quarter pounder. So it's just, you know, in a certain way, it's cool because he's still a very uh, cheap and, uh, you know, minimal means guy. You know, he's not like consumed by materialism. He still eats what all of us eat. Uh, but at the same time, it made me wonder, like, how maybe I can eat junk food. But fortunately enough, I came across this incredible article by the youngest billionaire in the history of humankind. It's really cool, in fact. In fact, he's a uh, lesser-known billionaire. His name's Dustin Moskowitz. He's one of the co-founders to Facebook, and uh, Forbes named him the youngest billionaire in history, which is a cool title, and also it's, it's cool that he's kind of not well-known despite having that incredible title. Uh, more importantly, he has a blog on medium.com that he doesn't update often, but there's this certain article that he wrote called Work Hard, Live Well, and I think it's incredibly insightful, and it's, it's a, he's a cool guy. He actually uh, built Asano, which I've used. It's an incredibly interesting app, uh, but the point of the article is and I've, I have photo screenshots of it in case he ever takes it down. But I screenshotted the part I liked the most, which you can view in the link below this video. But the point of it is uh, he answered this question that was asked of him. If you could do your life over again, what would you do differently? And he says he wish he had slept more hours, exercised regularly, and made better decisions in terms of what he ate or drank. He consumed too much soda and a lot of junk food. And this article really just shifted my mind because there's so much extensive, extensive science, so much research and studies that confirm what I found with how exercise extends how long you live, how productive you are, how focused you are, as well as nutrition and, uh, you know, certain things like uh, you can also add meditation. Uh, and yet there are certain outliers, like it or not. And he just reaffirmed my uh, point, which is that these are important. I mean, this billionaire, he, he, and he just didn't say it. He backed it up with data, with studies, and his own regrets. And he countered the one, uh, you know, point that could have been made against him. He says, you might think, but if you had prioritized those things, I'm quoting him directly, wouldn't your contributions have been reduced? Would Facebook have been less successful? So this is like the paradox that people bring up. Oh, well, if you exercise more, that takes up more time and energy. And therefore, you know, the extra life you get or the... The extra productivity is wasted because of the time you spend working out or exercising. Um, I don't think, you know, I think 
that is something to consider if you go to the extreme and you're you know spending hours at the gym but i would say you know 20 minutes a day really the the benefits you get out of that are probably 2 to 10x uh so he agrees with me he actually says i believe i would have been more effective a better leader and a more in focused employee i would have had fewer panic attacks and acute health problems like throwing my back out regularly in my early 20s. I would have picked fewer petty fights with my peers in the organization because I would have been generally more centered and self-reflective. I would have been less frustrated uh, and it would have required less hours, uh, blah, blah, blah. So you can read the full article himself, but he, he agrees with me. And then he goes on to point out studies showing how, um, you know, this... Uh, traditional American culture behind working 90 hours a week, it's not exactly ideal. And this whole 40 hour week thing was not done by just, you know, random chance. For the 40 hour week was actually created based off a profit maximizing research experiment done by the incredible Henry Ford of uh, Ford Motors. Uh, in the earliest 20th century. The basic idea and conclusion he found was that um, you actually get more output and more work done and productivity optimally around 40 to 50 hours per week for your employees versus what the traditional model was, which was people assumed that if you work your employees to death, like workhorses for 90 hours a week or 80 hours a week, uh, you get the most out of them, which is false. Uh, again, it's, it's, one, it's a great nod at why science and actual testing is more important than theory or whatever you believe is true. Uh, and so ult ultimately what he's saying here is that um, he basically agrees with a lot of the findings that I emphasize, which is that what you eat and your, your nutrition is incredibly important. Getting your full amount of sleep is important. Exercising is important. And honestly, there's such simple foundational things, and yet most people don't do it properly. Um, you know, I think the optimal way of doing it is to not go overboard. I think... You know, there are people who oversleep in certain ways and they use excuses. So what's the optimal dosage of each of these things and how should you do them to create optimal results? I think just having a general sense is good enough. I mean, it's not rocket science here. Most of us know generally what's good. And of course, you can get into the specifics and the nitty gritty. Uh, as as far as which food is healthy, which one's the most healthy. But at that point, you're looking at like nutritionist experts who are debating the minutia, the small marginal stuff that, you know, has very uh, minimal returns. Uh, obviously, you can obviously improve that over time, get a nutritionist if you can afford it to get your optimal results. But generally speaking, for most people, they suck at it. I mean, it's very clear that they're eating just straight junk food. Sodas, fried chicken, burgers. Uh, I have learned over time that you can get the best of both worlds in certain ways. You don't have to sacrifice like many women believe, many people believe that you have to sacrifice completely. And if you eat healthy, none of it's going to taste good. And uh, after studying a lot of awesome cooking videos on YouTube. I don't believe that anymore. I think, you know, the right chefs, the right recipes can make really healthy food taste incredible. And trust me, I'm a really picky eater. Uh, and so that's one thing. As far as sleep goes, again, people differ. Uh, there's small, subtle differences. I think uh, for me, I come from an Asian background and I have thousands of years of Asian ancestry and specific environmental situations that my body is more equipped for and therefore 
more Asian type foods that uh, are better suited for my body and a specific uh, unique set of nutritional uh, resources that might differ slightly from someone who's more European or Hispanic. Uh, so the same thing goes for sleep and nutrition. Maybe for whatever reason, some of us, whether it's because we grew up in African ancestry and uh, you, your culture, your livelihood required you to wake up early or, or survive on minimal sleep, you could be just as fully rested uh, as me with half the amount of sleep. So generally speaking though, eight hours is great. It's a great thing to aim for. Some people say, uh, and there's a YouTuber, his name's Scooby, and he's like a fitness guy. He says, if you need an alarm clock to wake up, you don't get enough sleep. You sleep until uh, your body wakes you. I would say maybe that's an extremist outlook. Uh, and for some people, they can't do that because they're just, they just think that they'll sleep for way too long. But maybe that really is your natural sleep cycle. I know for me specifically, I sleep 10 to 11 hours on average. I just am a long sleeper if I don't have an alarm clock. And that's just something you might have to accept. For some people, uh, maybe you can't because you're just so focused on uh, getting the most out of your life and you've been able to do just fine on five hours of sleep with an alarm clock. So you can't let go of that. I would say experiment with it. Um, I know my natural sleep after just not using alarm clock is around 10 to 11 hours. So I aim for at least 9 to 10 a day. Uh, and uh, I think that's really important. There's a lot of studies showing that more sleep is useful. Uh, again, you know, just the general direction is important. I mean, most people. I mean, they die without ever fixing this. And it's it's not the minutia that they're concerned about. They're just straight up in the wrong zone. They're eating junk food. That's clearly junk food. So fix those things. Sleep, exercise, nutrition. Same thing with exercise. I mean, there's so much out there on exercise. It's really not that. It's just common sense, man. Most people don't even exercise on a weekly basis. So it's not about how should I exercise, how should I do it. There's so much on there. Just get out there and start doing it. Start moving in the right direction. And long story short, I think it will incredibly help you out. Uh, and so, uh, you know, it's strange because how do you counteract that with people like Will Smith who say that like... Um, the only thing different from me and other people is I work harder than everyone. That's what Will Smith says. And that's why he's arguably one of the best actors in history. If you watch any interviews by him, Will Smith says that he will outwork anyone. So how do you combat that with all these success stories from actors or celebrities or millionaires or whoever else that uh, I've seen who say, uh, you know, I worked 80, 90 hours a week and that's how I succeeded. Uh, it's a strange world. I know a lot of people, Elon Musk and all those other people, they, they went that route to succeed. But I highly suggest you check out this article by um, this guy, Dustin, because he brings a good point where, which is that based off studies, you definitely hit a point of marginal returns. Well then, how come these people succeeded working 90 hours a week and doing what they did? I think I'm pointing back to Dustin's article. He makes the great point, and he's a great illustration of this, that you can get to this high level of success while making all sorts of mistakes. He made a lot of mistakes during his career, and he could have done it much more efficiently himself. And that just goes to show you that there's probably someone in the future who can listen to this and do it more efficiently uh, than even Dustin did. And he failed in the things I just mentioned. So you can learn and do better in those ways as well. And so don't always fall for this straight myth that, you know, working hard alone is all you need. I think optimizing can really help you. Of course, you know, throw in a few 40 to 60 to 70 hour weeks occasionally and that will definitely help. 
but uh, again the studies show as he points out that you really hit a point of marginal returns where you're getting very f little bang for your buck uh, based off extra effort because you're hitting a point of sleep deprivation where you're pretty much acting like you're exceptionally drunk so keep those things in mind and I definitely think uh, a healthy balance uh, of the right things can really help you out again check this guy out I'll link the article and thanks for watching see you next week if you're new to this channel hit the subscribe button below for free updates and of course all the good stuff is on my email newsletter which you can sign up for on my blog which is linked below as well thanks for watching peace hope you like this video of course if you're new to this channel this channel is all about self-development and success you can hit the subscribe button below for free updates every Thursday otherwise I will see you in my next video <music>